I'm here today on Skype with Marcus Zeepen, guitarist and one of the founders of Power Metal Legends Blind Guardian. Uh, I recently reviewed the band's latest release, Beyond the Red Mirror, on Nuclear Blast, and I can easily see it in contention to be one of the best albums of 2015, even this early in the, e in the year. So, Marcus, thanks for taking the time to talk with We Love Metal. Hey, you're very welcome, and what you just said about the album sounds very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's uh, been very well received. Uh, I've read other reviews and uh, very little uh, derogatory things <laughs> said about it. Um, and a lot of people have said it's it's the best you guys have done in years. Um, how do you feel about that analysis by us you know, just fans and, and writers, and how do you feel about how the album did turn out? Um, we're perfectly happy with it. I mean, uh, obviously, when we start writing new stuff, we try to do our best, and whatever that means, you know. Um, we are very, very happy with, with the result, because we feel that um, the album contains all the typical Blind Guardian trademarks, you know, the choirs and all the harmony guitar arrangements and all that stuff. But it also covers a lot of new territory that we didn't have in our music before. I mean, uh, obviously the, the orchestration, the, the orchestra stuff is bigger than it has ever been before. We worked with three different huge choirs, which adds a lot. We, we experimented a bit with, uh, very down-tuned guitars with mm -hmm. it, which is something that is completely new in the Blind Guardian universe. But, you know, uh, we, we, we tried to do lots of things that we didn't do before, and it was a lot of fun. And whenever you mess around with things that you, that, that you didn't do before, you know, it gets you new ideas, it, it gives you inspiration, and that's a great thing. Sure. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, we can just sit down and try to work on, on the songs and make them as good as we possibly can make them in that moment. And that's what we did, and we are... 100% happy with the result. But obviously, you know, it doesn't matter much what we think about our music. You know, uh, the fans have to like it as well. And as you said, uh, so far, all the response is pretty overwhelming, you know, and that's obviously great for us because, you know, um, we do our best in, in songwriting. We do our best in the studio, but you never know how fans will, will react to the new stuff. You know, that's always something that we're obviously very curious about. We didn't play any gigs with the new material so far. We just did the 70,000 Tons of Metal Cruise, but we didn't play any new songs there. Mm. What we did, though, is we um, we uh, presented the album to the fans. So there was a, a, a listening session where we played the whole album to people, and uh, the response has been pretty overwhelming as well. You know, there was... No harsh criticism at all. You know, everybody loved it. Everybody <laughs> said it's it's awesome. It's at least one of your best albums, if not the best. And that's obviously all we can ask for. You know, if if people dig the music as much as we do, and uh, you know, that's that's perfect for us. And now we can't wait to go on the road again and play that stuff live. So Excellent. that's that's gonna be the next step, and it's gonna be a lot of fun for us, I guess. All right. Well, yeah, you uh, you hit on the seventy thousand tons of metal. That was uh, one of my upcoming questions. So, um, I, I sounds like you guys had a great time there. Oh, definitely. You know, it, it has been the second time for us already. We, okay. we we did the very very first one already, and I I can just repeat what I said after the first one four years ago. You know, this is unique because. Um, the atmosphere on this festival is completely different compared to any other gig that you can play on this planet because normally what you have is you have this separation. There's the musicians that play in all those bands on the festivals and on the other side of the fence, there is the fans, you know, watching the gigs. Right. On the, bo on the boat, that does not exist. As soon as you leave your cabin... You're just one among many people on that boat enjoying a good time. You know, all the musicians <laughs> hang out with all the fans. Everybody is watching all the bands. Uh, everybody has a drink together and has a good time together. You know, there is no no such thing as, you know, oh, there are the musicians and we can't get there and there are the fans. We don't go there, whatever, you know. Everybody hangs out with everybody. And, you know, the funny thing is before we played it the first time, like four years ago, we didn't really know what to expect because, you know, that's 
obviously for any musician that's a rather unusual situation, you know, and we didn't know, okay, will everybody be stalking the musicians and, you know, <laughs> nothing like right. this happened. Nothing like this happened at all, you know. There were great people on the boat, fans that paid the tickets to see the bands and, you know, when you ran into somebody, you know, you were having a small talk about the band you've just seen or the band that you still want to see. You took a picture, you signed an autograph and, you know, had a beer together or something like sure. that. Sure. The atmosphere was just amazing. And it was the same thing now on this boat. The boat was even bigger. I think it was almost twice as big as the original one. So more bands, more people. It was fun. It was <laughs> a blast. Good. That sounds like it. Um, yeah, you guys have played, uh, I think, Prague Power USA just once, and it was uh, a few years ago. It's kind of the same atmosphere, it sounds like. It's, yeah, and Prague Power is a cool festival as well. You know, what I like is, you know, um, when it comes to, let's call them regular festivals that are not somewhere on the Caribbean or so. <laughs> you no, know, I, I like this, uh, you know, you have... One stage, you have, you know, a band play, then you have a little break in between, the next band comes up, you know, and then I love this atmosphere, you know, I'm not too much of a f fan of, of those huge festivals where you have like 10 stages and 300 bands playing and like, like 10 bands always playing at the same time. Sure. Because what typically happens to me, I mean, we played many of those festivals ourselves and whenever we hit such a festival, I check out the uh, the lineup and uh, see who I want to see. And normally, I miss all my favorite bands because half of them are playing at the same time, and the other <laughs> half is uh, playing while we have to do signing sessions, interviews, or whatever. You know. Uh -huh. So I'm 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 an old school guy when it comes to festivals. You know, I like the smaller ones, one stage, just like six, seven bands. That's perfect for me. All right. Yeah. That's that's uh you get to see who you want to see exactly you know, no matter what so exactly okay hey uh kind of back to the album um you guys you mentioned you've had you had three choirs work with the band um how did you convince them that this was a a good thing maybe for them money <laughs> <laughs> money talks <laughs> yeah you know that's convincing for everybody yeah <laughs> how, how was I their mean, reactions uh to it all uh, I mean, obviously, you know, those, you know, the choir guys and also the, the classical musicians, I think many of them are a bit skeptical when they hear that they're supposed to work with a metal band because right. that's not really part of their universe normally, you know, and, um, I think they, you, you can convince them when they, when they start practicing your stuff because obviously, you know, you have to write down the score for them. You know, you can't hand them a CD with, with MP3s or anything and say, Hey, listen to this and then play it, please. Sure. You have to give them the score and the conductor, you know, has to lead them through the score. And once they start playing that stuff, I think they discover that it's a lot of fun because at many songs, I think they're, they're, we're driving them to their limits because that stuff is not really easy to play. It's sometimes it's high speed stuff and tricky stuff. And I think that, um, makes them respect what we are doing. And in the end, they see, Hey, it's, it's a good song. You know, after all, a good song is a good song, whether it's classical music, whether it's metal, rock, pop, whatever, you know. And I think at some point they just realize, okay, that's good stuff. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the strength of your album is, is the songwriting for sure. So. I hope so. At yeah. least that's what we try to do. <laughs> yeah. Um most people have a favorite song on on any album. Uh mine is Ashes of Eternity. Although Twilight of the Gods is really close. Um can you tell us a little bit about uh Ashes? Uh well the 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 thing is with the with the um favorite songs in general, you know, many people keep asking me like uh what's your favorite song on the album and stuff and uh for me, that constantly changes. Sure. <laughs> I hear that from a lot of musicians. That it depends on the day of the week. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, it, it's like, um, if you, if you ask me this thing today, my answer would be, um, uh, Sacred Mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I love this, this roller coaster ride that this song gives, you know, starting as a kind of very easygoing ballad thing and after one, th one minute just madness kicks in and you know the the song just takes off and um 
ask me the same thing tomorrow and you, you most likely will get a completely different answer. <laughs> <coughs> but um, talking about Ashes, well, it's it's a great song. You know, it has all that speedy thrash parts to it. It's very aggressive. Sure. That's probably uh, what attracted me to it. Yeah, hey, that's, that's a good <laughs> thing to be attracted to. You yeah. know, after all, we're a metal band, so that's that's how things should be, you know. It's it's a very dark song, but it has um, some 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 very positive parts. You know, that's something that also is is rather new in in our music. You know, normally uh, metal bands tend to stick to to minor scales because that sounds darker, more sure. stuff. And you know, we uh, we worked a lot with major scales in certain parts, not for the whole songs, because that sounds weird if the whole song is a happy major metal <laughs> song. But that, that's weird. But, you know, the thing is, major scales are 50% of the musical, you know, universe. And it just uh, ignoring them means you ignore a lot of, of you know, options. Mm -hmm. And we mixed a lot, you know, that the, the, the basic atmosphere of the songs are rather dark. I think in general, the album is rather dark, but you know, every now and then we, we uh, pop up with much more positive sounding parts. Sometimes it's the, it's the, uh, the choirs, the, the choruses, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. but it's a nice way of breaking things up. So, uh, that was something that we explored as well. And we, we liked it. It was fun. All right. Yeah, it, it works for me. So, That's uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, unlike a lot of metal bands, uh, Blind Guardian has had very few personal changes over, what, 30 years or so? Pretty much, yep. Uh, what do you guys attribute that to? I mean... Um, we're still friends. We still talk to each other when there is a problem. I mean, you know, the, the, the thing is... We have our fights as well, just like any other band, you know, we're just human beings and we argue about songs, about the direction the album should go to whatever, you know, but uh, that's no reason to fire somebody, you know, when when we have arguments, you know, like we, we always try to find the best solution and, you know, uh, there is always, you know, something that we can agree on. And after that, the, 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 the fight is solved and the, the problem is gone, you know. And after all, it's, it's still the love and the passion for what we're doing that, that binds us together, I would say. Because, you know, it's, it's, we started as kids like almost 30 years ago. And, you know, uh, we, we were playing the music that we love to play. And, you know, we were able to make a living of this, you know, get record deals. The release albums tour around the world for for such a long time. Uh, why should we fire somebody just because we argue about a fucking guitar solo or <laughs> chorus or riff or anything? You know, it's like, nah, we're a union. We want the same things and we know how to get them. So why change anything? All right, sounds like the the egos were put aside a long time ago, and and you guys kind of. I mean, uh, we everybody in the band has. A certain ego. Oh, sure, also. sure. But, you know, that's that's normal, I think. But, uh, you know, uh, we, over all those years, we perfectly learned how to work with each other. You know, when, when, when you work with the same people for such a long time, you know how they are working. You know when you have to give them their peace and maybe just step back and let them do whatever they do. You know when you can talk to them and say, hey, that's bullshit what you're doing, whatever, you know. You, you just know how to handle each other. Right. And, you know, that's all it needs. Okay. Good. Um, well, you mentioned uh, you were a teenager when you guys started. Um, how did you get into music in general and metal specifically? Um, music in general was like my parents wanted me to learn an instrument when I was like nine or ten years old, I think, something around that. And, you know, mm -hmm. my mother was suggesting, oh, you should learn the clarinet or something like this, trombone and stuff like that. And I was not too impressed by that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I was discovering music at that time, you know, it, I, I was not really into something special, but I was, you know, uh, some, some songs that were playing on the radio were catching my attention and I discovered, okay, there's good stuff. And, um, in the very early 80s, it was like early 81, I turned into a metalhead. You know, there, there was uh, 
on the radio there was a show that was playing rock and metal stuff and they played Purgatory that which Iron Maiden released as a single back then and that song just completely blew me away uh-huh. and from that second on I was a metalhead you know and next day I went into town and bought everything from Maiden that I could lay my hands on <laughs> And from there, you know, started discovering all the other bands, you know, like Black Sabbath and Rainbow Stuff, Deep Purple, Mozart, Saxon, you know, all the bands from back then. And as I said, I was hooked and it never changed. You know, I still love metal, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't play in Blind Guardian. I, I opened up at some, you know, back then when you were a teenager, it's like it has to be metal or it's not good. And at some point I learned that actually, yeah, there is good stuff that is not metal. Uh-huh. And, you know, uh, you, you just open up for, for everything. And today there, there are just two types of music for me. That's uh, the stuff that I like and the stuff that I don't like. And <laughs> as long as I like something, I don't give a fuck if it's metal or pop or rock or punk or whatever. You yep. know, A good song is a good thong- song and that's all that matters that, to me. That, that's, uh, that's perfect because I said that uh, to uh, my best friend when we were teenagers. I said there are two kinds of music. <laughs> the kind yeah. I like and the kind I don't like. So, yeah, perfect. Uh, <laughs> The you know forget the rest whether it's blues or jazz or yeah whatever you know as long as you like yeah. it that's that's your song right. and if you don't like it you know who cares don't nope. listen to it don't waste your time with with stuff you don't like exactly all right um, I'm always curious I like to ask this question uh, what do you like to do outside of music do you have any hobbies or interests that uh, really yeah right so obviously I mean. Um, Obviously, uh, when we're on tour, we're far away from our families. You know, we're all married. We all have kids. So when we're home, we, we love spending time with the family. Okay. Uh, aside from this, I love reading books, you know, uh, all kinds of books like fantasy stuff, horror stuff, uh, crime stuff, whatever. A good book is a good book, you know, just like with music. Right. right. I love watching movies or TV shows. Um, I love going to the cinema. I love playing computer games. <laughs> I, I love, you know, just grabbing my bike and go out if the weather is nice enough, with, <laughs> which is not that often. But, <laughs> you know, those kind of things, I would say. Okay, good. Um, all right. Hey, for Blind Guardian, any plans for a North American tour? I know you said you haven't played any of the new tunes live, but... Uh, um, actually, yes. Uh, I, I can't give you the exact dates yet because our booker is working on them right in this moment. Uh, tomorrow there will be an update on tour dates, but that's not including the U.S. yet. But okay. I can I can already tell you that we'll be back to the U.S. this year. So right. uh, it's been a uh, while. <laughs> it's been a while, yeah, but it's been a while for all the territories, you know. But that's the typical Blind Guardian thing. We release an album, then we'll be on the road for one and a half to two years, mm-hmm. and then we don't play at all because we work on new songs, you know. If we keep touring, then the the the, the gaps between albums at some point will be ten years or so, <laughs> <laughs> and that might be a bit too long. So at some point we say, okay, we're done with touring for now. We we just focus on writing new stuff and recording it. And once this is done, then we hit the road again. And this is what's going to happen very soon. I mean, we kick off in Europe in early April, be uh, on the road in Europe for like two and a half months or so. And um, I think next on the list is Japan. As I said, tomorrow there will be an update on tour dates. And uh, as I said, I can promise you we'll be back in late autumn, I think. That's the plan in the moment. Our booker is working on the dates as soon as they are confirmed. We'll put them online, obviously. But we'll be back to the U.S. for sure this year. All right. Excellent. Uh, final question for you, Marcus. Our site is called We Love Metal. Why do you love metal? Uh, because it's... Honest music, it's music with passion, and uh, I think it was my first love when it when when we talk about music, you know, it's immortal for me. Excellent. All right, thanks for taking the time today. Anytime. And to all the listeners out there, check out Beyond the Red Mirror. Uh, you will not be disappointed at all. I hope so. <laughs> thanks for your time.